right, today we will be sewing our saxophone bag. This is an alto sax bag, but the same process will work for the tenor and the berry, as well as the bass clarinet. So I have both pieces, and we are going to start out by taking them one at a time, and we're going to sew around the edges just the long basting stitch, just to make sure that everything stays together and stays even. So starting up near the top, we're making sure all our edges are matched. We're going to sew, this is about a quarter of an inch, and you can use a long, I'm just using my regular straight stitch, you can use a longer basting stitch if you want. And just sew all the way around the edge. Now when you come up to one of the holes, either the strap hole or the neck hole or the foot hole in the bass clarinet, sew up to the line that's drawn and I backstitch just to make it extra secure and then we're going to sew around that line, so right on the line. Either right on the line or a little above, doesn't matter much in this instance but just don't sew across the front. And then continue on with your basting stitch till you get to the next one. And then you repeat for the next side. Sew on both the holes, the neck, the strap hole, and the neck hole, and the foot hole in the base clarinet. You can see I've stitched around it so that when I trim it out, it'll be stable. Now once you've basted all the way around both of them, then you're going to do the same thing and baste around the handholes. So again, here you're going to run just on the outside of that line. So I put it just on the inside of my presser foot, so I'm running about an eighth an inch, between an eighth and a quarter inch seam but you want to be just outside that traced line. So, see I have stitching just outside that line, so you can see the stitching on the other side. So then you're going to cl clip your threads, repeat on the other half, and then we'll get ready to cut things out. On this top edge, we're going to make the channel where the drawstring comes through. To make the drawstring channel, you're going to fold the sides of that two inches extra of the bottom fabric, the outside fabric. You're going to fold the edges under slightly and then fold the top down. You can press this if you want to. I find finger pressing works just as well. It's basically we're trying to hide all the raw edges, so we're going to fold that in all the way around and then fold it down to where it's just, your fold is just matching the raw edge there so that you have a nice little channel. And then this, of course, you want to pin. Now on the other side, you're going to tuck in that raw end, fold the top down, and fold it over so you have this nice channel for the drawstring to go through. And just even it out all the way across. And pin it down. Probably easiest if you do the two ends first and then pin down pin down the middle. You'll do that pinning on both sides and then you're just going to use your straight stitch and stitch just along the bottom edge. Securing the fold down to the other two layers. 
This hides all the raw edges and creates that nice drawstring channel at the top of the bag. Nice channel here. You can see the end where we can poke our drawstring in. And then we'll do the same on the other half, and then we'll be ready to work on the handholds. Now you have your two halves of your bag, the nice basting stitch all the way around, the two handholds stitched around, and your strap, your foot, and your neck holes all stitched around. And a very nice channel on the top. So now it's time to cut out all these holes that we stitched around. So in each of the strap and the neck holes, we're going to cut just inside the stitching line that we did there, not cutting through the stitching, just enough to make the hole but far enough away from the stitching that we don't break it so it stays stable. And you repeat that for all of those holes. Then we're going to do the same thing on the hand holes. So kind of fold it in half. Take a snip. On these, stay. Make sure you get through all three layers, and stay right inside that tracing line. You're going to cut all the way around. And you'll need one of these sets of circles again, so don't cut all the way through the center of it or anything like that, because we'll use it in a later step. So cut all the way around. I'm going to save this stack for a later step. And I have my nice hand hole that has the stitching around to just stable, stabilize the edges. I'm going to repeat that on the other half, and we'll be ready to put them together. In your kit, you should also have these small pieces of fabric that match the color of the front of your bag. These are going to be the elastic casing that goes around the neck and the strap holes, and in the base clearing net, you'll have two more for the foot hole. You're going to take one of the small pieces of fabric, you're going to fold the short edge under, about half an inch or so, and then on the outside of the bag so that your colors are matching, you're going to line that up just on the, with the edge right on the outside of one of those strap holes so that the raw edges meet and the folded over edge is running along the long side. And then you're going to fold the other short side over and you're going to match it up on the opposite side of that same hole, the same way. You're going to pin. And then you're going to stitch around the hole, just easing that fabric in along that edge of the hole. So it's going to pucker a little bit, but that's okay. You're just going to ease it on around. So just use your straight stitch and about a quarter inch seam allowance. Back stitch to start to anchor it. Keep the raw edges even as close as you can as you go around and just ease it around. Let it fold or pleat up if you need to. Just make sure you catch all the edges as you go around. Come around to the other side, back stitch. And you end up having a stitch that comes all the way around here, and all the way around here. And you end up with this kind of pouchy looking thing. 
So then flip it around to where you're looking at the inside of the bag, and you've got this thing sticking up around the hole. Fold it into the other side, and this time you're going to tuck the long end under. You're going to bring that down and match it up on, match the raw edges like this, fold it over so it's covering that raw edge. So that we're making the casing right here. So you're going to pin on one end, same way you did on the other side. And then match up your raw edges again. Keep it folded, match up those raw edges, fold it over so it covers the edge and covers the stitch line. And then again, you're going to stitch all the way around that opening, easing it around the curve, creating that nice casing for your elastic. Just again, make sure once you ease it around, that you're catching all the layers so that we don't have a big gap on the edge of the hole. You see, there's your casing. And you will repeat this on all the rest of the neck and the strap holes. Once you've put the casing on the neck and strap holes, it's time to do the hand holes. For those, we're going to use these cherry cloth wristbands and we're going to attach one to each hole. So the way we do that is we use the quartering method, which is just a way of attaching a small stretchy thing to, some, to a hole that's larger. So you're going to fold your hand hole, your big one, in half and put pins at the halfway points to mark them. Then fold it in half the other way, match up your pins, closely and put a pin in those folds which marks the quarter. So when you open it up you have a hole and you have a pin at each quarter. Now you're going to do the same thing with your wristband. You're going to fold it in half, put a pin at each half, fold it the other way, match up those pins, and put a pin in those folds. And now in your wristband, you have the quarters marked. So I bet you know what we're going to do next. You're going to put the wristband through so that the long part of it is sticking out towards the front, because that's where you want it to be, matching up the raw edges so it's, kind of, it's right sides together. You're going to match up one of those pins, pin the wristband to the bag, Move your extra pin and then move, match up the next pin around, pin the wristband to the bag, and so on all the way around until you've matched all four pins.
So at this point, we have our bag so pinned to our wristband, but you see we've got a lot of extra fabric. But because the wristband is elastic, it will stretch between those pins to match that. And that's what we're going to do when we sew it, is we're going to stretch it between the pins and stitch along the edge using a zigzag stitch. And the reason we do it in quarters is so that we get an even amount of stretch all the way around rather than it being loose on one side and very tight on the other. So as I put it in my machine, I'm going to use about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Put it under the foot, right by one of the pins, is it right behind or right ahead. Lower your foot and put your needle down, and then you can remove that pin. Now the idea is, once you get it started, anchor that first stitch, but then you're going to use your right hand to stretch the elastic and you can use your left hand to stabilize it as you stitch around and you're going to stitch to the next pin keeping the edges even as you get to the next pin make sure you stop with your needle down and then remove your next pin You're going to do it that same way, stitching one quarter at a time until you've gone all the way around. I find it's easier to stabilize the wristband if I stick my thumb inside the inside of the wristband with my left hand and then use my top fingers to hold it tight and then I use my right hand to pull. And you're going to ease it around that corner. Stop it with the needle down, pull your next pin, and continue on around. And as you come around to that last bit, just back stitch to anchor it. And when you pull it off, you'll have it nicely attached like that. And when you flip it over, it looks kind of like the sleeve of a jacket, which is what we're looking for. Alright, now you've got all the parts done, it's time to put it together.